because the Lord left Saul. And he's afraid of David because of the anointing. The Bible says in Ezekiel 37, Hold thou anointed chair that covers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That anointed cherub that covers. We're talking about Lucifer. And when he lost his anointing, he is trying to deceive us, to destroy us, just like Saul threw that javelin at David more than once. Hallelujah. But he's a fallen devil. I said, he's a fallen devil. And Jesus said, no man can pluck you out of my hand. And then he said, my father was just greater than all. No man can pluck you out of my father's hand. And I asked the question, how many hands does one man have? Two. No man can pluck you out of my hand. No man can pluck you out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Praise God. The only one that can eat his hand is you. In John 6, 66, and many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Free moral choice. And Jesus looked at the twelve. He said, we all should go away. Peter said, to whom shall we go? Thou has the words of eternal life. Where are we going to go? Where are we going to go this morning with the Jesus? Where are we going to go this morning with the Jesus? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I was going to ask my wife to stand as well for Pastor did. Praise God. When God created Adam, he looked at him and said, I can do better than that. Praise God, he created Eve. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. I'm glad he created Eve. Praise God. God bless you, baby. See you, praise the Lord. <laughs> That's where'd you get that? Right from my heart, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, praise God. I'd be very, very, very upset if it was a guy named Sam. Here, praise God. I let you know God is so good to us. I say God is so good to us. God is so good to us. You know, I we feel at home. My wife and I we spoke. We feel at home. This is beautiful. This is a beautiful church. And uh, if you're here for visiting for the very first time. In our church in LA Lake, we have a sign, a step through our doors is a step in the right direction. And I believe that when you walked into the church this morning, that it's a step in the right direction. Amen. And I want to say if there's, is there any first time visitors here? Raise your hand. Anybody? One? Anybody? Yeah, yeah I guess we have some work to do for tonight. <laughs> Praise God. How many will invite somebody to the house of God tonight? How many will do it? How many will do it? Come on, folks. Come on, folks. Work with me. Praise God. How many will do it? Praise God. Amen. I let you know you missed a tremendous Bible study this morning at 11. Amen. We were so blessed to hear your pastor. And I, I know his head's not going to get swelled up because he understands just like I do. Without Jesus, I can do nothing. And so all glory and praise goes to the Lord. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Wow. Wow. I think I'm just going to do the word of God. Let's take a look at our time this morning. Amen. Amen. Why sit here until we die? Why sit here until we die? It's just like home. The computer always doesn't work. It doesn't work all the time. That's all right. <laughs> Why sit here until we die? I ask a question to us men this morning, women, young men, young women today. Why sit here until we die? This world in which we live isn't going crazy. 
This world has already gone crazy. Let's stand. Let's stand for one scripture. For one scripture. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Kings 7 and 3. Praise God. That's what you need to bring your Bibles. Praise the Lord. 2 Kings 7 and 3. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says this. And there are four leprous men at the entering of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? Pastor, can you pray? Father in heaven, we thank you, Jesus Christ, for a word from the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, because it's all we really want. Is there a word from the Lord? Is there a word from the Lord? Yes. Jesus, there is always a word from God. Now I know, Lord Jesus Christ, that you will speak to me and you will speak to us. But I pray that we would speak to you and our answer would be yes to whatever your will is, whatever your way is. Anoint your servant this morning. Use him beyond the limits of his humanity. Use him in the supernatural. And may we hear the word that revives us again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we just lift up our hands? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we break through the flash into the spirit one more time? Can we do it? Hallelujah. Paul said to Timothy, he said, I would that all men would lift up holy hands without doubt and wrath. Without wrath and doubting. And when we look up holy hands, praise God, we're, we're, we're entering into God's territory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can we clap for the Lord? Praise God. God bless you to see the curse of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to apologize for the computer not working. Because we, we came in, we came in a few minutes late for prayer. And uh, I had my scriptures here. And I usually dropped them off for the last couple of minutes. So, so uh, forgive me. Praise God. The computer's working. <laughs> it's just that my brain wasn't working. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Murder, rapes, drug addiction, alcohol dependency, sexual sins. Our world calls evil good and good evil. This world is seducing our young women and turning our men into sissies. This world is deceived. There is a program. Now that I have this, this uh, media presentation at our home, but there's a program that, that we've seen recently in someone else's place. And, and it was called The Walking Dead. And, uh, and you know, I was looking at this thing, you know, on the screen. And, and I said, The Walking Dead? What on earth is going on? What's talk what were they talking about? And dead people rising, uh, apparently, from what I got from it, from the grave. And they were chasing live people around that didn't die. And they are chewing on their ears and everything else. And, and coming back to life, killing people and eating them. And... And how sick can you get? Talk to me. We came a long ways from leaving the beaver. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God for the young people. You don't you don't even know who that was. Praise God. I'm letting you know. I mean, I mean, uh, hey, we came a long ways. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived all at the same time. The truth is. It's nothing but a big lie. The Bible says it's appointed on the man once. Everybody say once. To die and then after that the judgment. There's no such thing. That's right. Mm -hmm. 
There's no such thing. It's true. The truth is, people are watching these types of programs. All they're already dead spiritually. Remember the prodigal son when he left the father? He went and arrived to sleep, and he was with a bunch of uh, you know women of the night and all that kind of business. And the fact of the matter is that he ended up in the pig pen. Mm -hmm. And when he came back, the father didn't chase him down because this son he knew exactly what he was doing. Mm -hmm. He had it all planned out. Father, give me, give me, Father, give me. And he gave the inheritance. My son asked me, Father, give me my inheritance. I said, well, I'd answer him this way. Well, son, we have, we have a big problem here. He says, uh, well, what's the problem, Dad? I said, well, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Praise God. But this father gave him the inheritance along with his older brother. And you know what happened? He wasted it all. He ended up in that pig pen. But when he came to himself, he said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to the father. And I can say, Father, I sinned against heaven against you. I'm no more worthy to be called your son. Make me. Right. Now, there's a big difference between give me and make me. In right. one of your highest servants. And when he came back, the Bible says that when the Father embraced him like Jesus does to us, he said, kill the fatty calf, put a shoes on his feet and coat on it, and put a ring on his finger. This, my son, was dead. Right. And now he's alive. He's lost. And now he's found. And we, uh, a woman or a man that lives in pleasure, the Bible says, is dead while they live. Yep. Yep. All right. That's Bible. Not Hollywood. I said, that's Bible. I said, that's Bible. Not Hollywood. Praise God. Hollywood. They say all kinds of crazy things. They, they, they're so... Uh, you know, just motivated to, to bring all these pictures uh, to what I read in the paper, Armageddon or uh, Noah or whatever. Because it's all a bunch of nonsense. Mm -hmm. It's not spiritually correct. Right. right. I said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Right. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, what are we feeding on? What's the world feeding on? We need some good food. Hallelujah. We can't eat trash like this. Praise God. We can't absorb it. Amen. I had a family member that's backslidden. And uh, the family member phoned me after watching one of these shows and said, have you seen it? I said, no. Well, is this true? And I said, no. Is that true? No. I'm talking about the picture. Is this true? No. It's a bunch of lies. Without holiness, the Bible says, no man, no woman shall see the Lord. I said, no man, no woman shall see the Lord. Let me help you a little bit with prophecy. Just, you know, it's not on the screen. And apologize that beautiful young lady that back there once more. But you know what? When Jesus came and, and it was, he was fellowship with his disciples in Matthew 24, his disciples were all excited. He showed Jesus all the buildings of the temple and everything but the temple. And Jesus said, see not all these things, for all these things, you know, should be thrown down, you know, and, and everything's going to be destroyed, all these things are going to be, and then he sat at the Mount of Olives, on the Mount of Olives, he sat down, and God's so cool, he was sitting down in exactly the same place where he's going to come back in and and, and Zechariah chapter 14 when he stands on Mount of Olives, but he said, he said, they said, tell us which of these things be, which should be the sign that come in the end, and the end of the world, and he said, the very first thing he said, let no man deceive you. For right. many shall come in my name and shall deceive many. Yes, yes, yes. And then he went on to say, there's going to be wars and rumors of war, see me not trouble. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Right. Underscore, the end is not yet. Right. But then the Bible goes on to say in Matthew 24, verse 14, the Bible says this, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and yes. then the end shall come. Yes. I said, then the end shall come. Yes. I said, then the end shall come. Yes. And he's waiting in you, brother. He's waiting on you, sister. He's waiting on me. He's waiting on my wife. He's waiting on all of us, praise God, to get with it, praise God, to go on the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. Praise God. Praise God. And you back up one verse from Matthew 24, verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. 
It's wonderful that you started your race. It's wonderful that I started my race. But I gotta finish my race. Sister, you gotta finish your race. Brother, you gotta finish a race in the Olympics. They have a 100 yard dash, a 200, 400. I was telling her, tell my wife last night, you know, like 400 meters is a long ways, man. I think I'll, I'll lose my breath doing that. But the fact of the matter is, is that one wins that race. And oftentimes, so I understand there's people on, on a 100 meter, 200 meter, 400 meter, they are running and they fall. Anybody know what I'm talking about? They fall. Well, the one that won the race, they're, they're roaring, they're clapping, they're, you know, the salutations are being given, but almost as loud. Yeah, it's true. Almost as loud as that man or that woman win that race. That person that fell. They didn't stay down. In the world, they didn't stay down. They got back up again, and they hobbled across that finish line. Praise God. I love that you know that crowd roared. Praise God. You know the difference. I said the crowd roared because they finished the race. If we have to cross that finish line, even beat up a little bit, I'm letting you know it's the most important that we finish the race. We need to finish the race. He that's going to come the end the same. Oh my God, help us. My God, help us this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Help us. Help us, Lord Jesus. This morning, the world's waiting for a witness. The world's waiting for you. Hallelujah. To get it together. The world's waiting for me. Praise God. To preach them. This morning, uh, your pastor was saying, you know, you're sitting in the mall watching all the unsaved people walk by. And, and uh, you know, this morning when we went out, sure the door of our sister Sandra's uh, building. And, and uh, I, I see this one young lady at the, at the door, on the outside of the door. She didn't get in yet. And she's just playing with her phone. And, and, uh, and my heart went out to this young lady. But as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons and daughters of God. We need to have compassion. Yes. We need to have a burden. Without a vision, the people perish. We need to have it. We need to have it. We need to ask God for it. I said we need to ask God for it. Bless us. Praise God as we are blessed with this teaching this morning. We need to ask God for it. Well, how do we get it? In James 1 and 5, if any man lacketh wisdom, let him ask of God. He'll give it to all men liberally. That means women too. I'm letting you know he'll give it to all of us, literally. And I'm letting you know, but let him ask in faith. Yeah. Nothing waver, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea that's driven of the wind and tossed. Yeah. Let not that man think that he should receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man or a woman is unstable in all their ways. And that's why Jesus said, if our eye is single, we're full of light. Yeah. And so if our eye is single, we're looking at Christ. If our eye is single, we're looking at God. We're looking at Him. We're looking for direction from Him. But if our eye be evil, then what's in our body, what's in our soul is darkness. And how great is that darkness? One eye is looking at the world. One eye is looking at God. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Or a woman, praise God. I'm letting you know this morning. What is this wisdom? The memorize the, the Encyclopedia Britannica? No. Proverbs, he that went to souls, or she that went to souls is wise. Praise God. I said he or she that when his souls is wise. And we need to ask God for this wisdom. Right. We need to ask God and plead with God. God, change me, Lord. Just like the prodigal said, make me into one of your hired servants. He's the potter. We are the clay. But he will not force us to be molded in the palm of his hand. He will allow us to be molded, providing that we submit ourselves on him. Can we pop on the Lord? beginning, God created Adam. We know that. He created him out of the dust of the earth, which comes from the Hebrew word of fire, A-P-H-A-R. And uh, in Genesis 2, and verse 7, sister, take a look at this. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, of fire, red clay, dust. That's why the preacher says, ashes, ashes, dust, dust, you know, in a funeral. And breathed into his nostrils 
the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Please don't confuse the breath of God with, uh, with uh, a colorless, tasteless, gaseous symbol O occurring free in our Earth's atmosphere called oxygen. We're talking about God's oxygen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no. I'm referring to the breath of God, His Spirit, breathed into Adam's nostril. And Adam became a living soul. Adam didn't have a mother. He didn't have an earthly father. God created him. Perfect sculpture standing there. Amen. Better than any sculpture that you could ever imagine in, in Greece or anywhere on planet Earth. He had internal organs. He had ears. He had eyes. He had nose. He had everything that, that a man would want and a man needs. And, but he was dead. And he created all the animal life, all the birds and all the animals before he, he created Adam in that sculpture. <sighs> Breathed in his nostrils and breath of life. And Adam opened his eyes. Wow. Can you imagine? Wow. The fragrance, as your brother said, of God's presence. The fragrance of life. The fragrance of the flowers and the fruit trees. The, 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 the awesomeness of, of the animals all around him. And the, the lions, tigers, and bears of life. And all that kind of stuff that he's seen. All the, all the things that was running in front of him. But he didn't find anybody to spend time with. And everything that God created, he said, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Didn't he? Mm -hmm. But then he said, it's not good. <laughs> that man should be alone. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank God. <laughs> thank God for the woman. Amen. I said, thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But God gave him a, 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 a commandment. He said, but every tree in the garden that has freely eat, they refer to their freely eat anytime you want, Adam. Free thee any time you want, Eve. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat thereof. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Well, Eve got all messed up. She really didn't know what God said. And uh, the devil came to her. And you know the story. You know, hath not God said, you shall, eat, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Yeah, God had said that. Eve said, neither shall we touch it lest we die. God never said anything will touch it. You can play football with it. I'm not trying to be sacrilegious, but I, I, mean, I would have wanted to keep away from that tree. That's right. That's right. He said, you shall not die. First lie to humanity. But, but the Bible says that wasn't the first lie because he lied to one third of the angels of God. Out of the book of Revelation, also out of the book of, of Isaiah. But nonetheless, and when she saw the tree that was good for food, less of flesh, pleasant to the eyes, less of the eye, and desire to make one wise, part life, she took of that fruit and did eat and gave also to her husband with her. Adam's not off the hook on this. With her. And they both ate. And he's probably waiting for her to drop dead. But these two shall be one flesh. Uh-huh. And when he ate, the eyes of the both were open. They knew they were naked. <clears throat> and what happened was, they died spiritually. There's all kinds of oxygen in the air to breathe in the natural. But they were not breathing in the spiritual. And that's why Jesus said, you must be born again to Nicodemus. And he right. said, well, how can I be born when he's old? He entered the second time his mother's womb be born. That was just born of flesh is flesh. That was just born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee. You must be born again. But in verse 5 of John chapter 3, except, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. right. Right. And that's the reason why Christ came and died. Mm -hmm. But there was curses in the three main to the three uh, the, and of course the ground was cursed as well but hmm. when he was created of the dust of the ground and something happened when God gave up these three curses and of course the ground was also a curse but the fact of the matter is when he, when he gave it up to, to Eve and he gave it up to Adam and when he, when he talked to Satan which was that serpent in Genesis 3 and 14 take a look and the, and the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above, above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Mm -hmm. 
I always thought about that for years, and back wow. until a few years back. I used to try to think about that for years. And, wow. and you know, I, and serpents eat frogs, eat lizards, they eat all kinds of stuff. But 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 God said, Upon my belly thou shalt go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I looked it up out of curiosity in the Hebrew. It means exactly the same thing. A har, a p h a r. His entree is not rats. It's not mice. It's not frogs. It's not lizards. It's not. It's humanity. And that's the reason why. And any time that Satan is depicted, he's depicted as a carnivore. He's depicted as a wolf. He's depicted as a bear. He's depicted as a lion. He's he's depicted as a and as a. As a dragon, he depicted of all these carnivores, and that's the reason why the Bible says in First Peter five and eight, take a look. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a, <clears throat> as a roaring lion, yes. walketh about seeking whom he may devour. His entree is you. Right. His entree is me. Right. His entree is your family. Right. His entree is mine. Right. And by the grace of God. In the power of the Holy Ghost, I come against Satan today in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. He is afraid of your anointing, brother. He is afraid of your anointing, sister. If we will separate ourselves from sin, if we will separate ourselves from the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, God will work miracles, signs, and wonders in your life. I tell you, do it. First John 2 and 15. You don't have to turn there, but love not the world, neither things that's in the world. For all that's in the world, ever said all. All. Lust of flesh. Lust of the eye. Pride of life. Not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God shall abide forever. Shall live forever. Right. And how many times was Jesus tempted? In Matthew chapter 4. 40 days fasting. Let the spirit in the wilderness. The tempter came to him and said, If you be the son of a man, command the stones to be bread. It's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He took him up to a Stephen High Temple. And they said, If thou be the son of God, jump, jump off because it, it's written. He's quoting scripture, but he twists it. <laughs> he twisted. I'll show you where and why in a minute. <laughs> he said, because the scripture says, the angel of the Lord shall be there to bear the end unless I dash the foot against the stone, take it out of Psalms. Well, there's a distinct difference, don't you think, of jumping off the pinnacle of the temple. Woo! And walking down on terra firma, hitting your foot against a rock. Don't you think there's a difference? He said, it's written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Well, who is he tempted? Uh -huh. Jesus. Yes. And then he said, well, I'm going to give him the whole kick the boodle now. He told him to exceed the high mountain, showed him the kings of the world, all the glory of them. Right. He said, all these things will I give you if you'll that portion. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> what a joker. <laughs> Worship the Lord my God, and Him only should I serve. I'm not Praise God. He can try, but He's not going to be successful if you're the anointed of God. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says in Revelation 12 and 12, the Bible says, Warn to inhabit the earth and sea, where the devil has come down to you with great wrath, knowing he hath but a short time. Don't listen to him. Don't get involved with the worldly elements. Don't get uh, involved with all this stuff. Praise God. All this stuff. All this meaningless stuff. But notice what God said. As soon as he gave uh, the enemy, thou shalt thou eat all the days of your life. Mm -hmm. In Genesis 3 and 15, sister. Praise God. Notice what he said. Yeah. I'll put enmity. I'll put a division between the one, thee and the woman. Between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head. Thou shalt bruise his heel. Amen. Amen. I'm going to crush you, Satan. Yeah. I'm going to crush you, Satan. Yeah. I'm going to crush you, Satan. Yeah. I am going to crush you, Satan. I'm going to crush you, Satan. Amen. 
I'm gonna crush you, Satan. I said, I'm gonna crush you, Satan. I'm gonna crush you, Satan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, Hallelujah. When the disciples came back in Luke chapter 10, verse 17, they said, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. I want to share something with you this morning. And and then they he said, I beheld Satan's lightning fall from heaven. As I said on Friday night, he wasn't the first animal that stuck his head in the ground like an ostrich, what do they say? He came head first like lightning. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. He was blinded by that light. Mad devil. A dumb devil. I said that Friday night, you know why he's so dumb? He got kicked out of the place we're trying to get into. That's pretty dumb. I said, that's dumb. But you see, what happened is that I'll put energy to be between thee and the woman, between thy seat and her seat. It shall bruise thy, she shall bruise thy head, but you shall bruise his heel, Christ being on the cross. But in Isaiah 7, 14, take a look. Praise God. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. You know what that means? Emmanuel, according to Matthew 123, is God with us. God with us. Amen. God with us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. In John chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 14. And the Word was made flesh. God was made flesh. And we beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And I'm letting you know that the woman, she brought sin into the world along with her husband, Adam. But a woman that was a virgin, she allowed this presence of God to overshadow her. And because she allowed that to happen, she, along with the Lord, defeated Satan. Defeated Satan. Of humanity. Wow. Amen. Amen. Thank you. They destroy him. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the world was plunged into sin. Cain killed Abel. Adam and Eve had another son, Seth. And men started or began to call upon the name of the Lord. But please note, no one walked with God like Adam and Eve. When they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord in the cool of the day, the voice of the Lord God. Why? Where are you? He knew where they were. So I was afraid because I was naked, okay? But that tree, you know how it goes. And no one walked with God until seven generations later. Seven generations later, someone made up their mind, I want a relationship with God. 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 In Genesis 5, it's starting at verse number 18. Find out what happens. Praise God. I don't know. Praise God. These powders are dying on me. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Give me another one. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. I'm hitting the mute button. Praise God. <laughs> Say you must think in mute. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> and Jared lived 162 years and he begot Enoch. Now watch what happens. And Jared lived after he got Enoch 800 years and he got sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were 960 and two years. Anyone? Died. Ah. All right. And Enoch lived 60 and five years and began Methuselah. Now stop there. Just go back to verse 20. Praise God. Just verse 20, just for a second. And all the. Yeah, yeah, 21 is good. 28 is good. <laughs> and, 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 and Enoch. Lived 60 and 5 years and began Methuselah. Now I'm going to show you that Enoch did not live for God. I can prove it to you. Enoch did not live for God for the first 65 years. And Satan has an opportunity to mess around with our minds sometimes. Oh, you wasted so much time. You wasted so much time, sister. You wasted so much time, brother. Look at all the time you wasted. Let me uh, give you some confession. I have heard about these angry birds. It's a, a, it's a, a game on, on, a, on, a, on a phone. And I'm not computer savvy, but and, and it took me quite a long time just to figure out how to get in there. But anyways, as soon as I see it, you know, they're, they're trying to kill a bunch of pigs. Anybody ever hear about crazy birds? 
Is that name? Angry Birds. Angry Birds. Okay, see how? <laughs> okay, there we go. Angry Birds. Pastor knows what I'm talking about. Don't worry, he'll correct me. <laughs> Are you acquainted with that name then? <laughs> well, anyways, make my personal testimony come to light. I got convicted of playing Angry Birds for hours at a time, even, you know, when I retired at night, I was, I was killing all these pigs. <laughs> I said, Lord, I'm, I'm wasting so much time. Have you thought that went to... <laughs> no. <laughs> and so I, I stopped it. Well, the devil will lie to you, sister. The, the devil will lie to you, brother, and say, look at how much time you're wasting. Mm -hmm. right. It's true. Right. It's true. He plays with all of us. But the gifts and the callings of God are love and penance. He still wants to use you. Moses killed that uh, Egyptian 40 years, when he was 40 years old. And he lost all confidence. He lost all confidence and he can't be uh, real slow in speech. Well, taking care of Jethro, he met a sweetheart by the name of Zabora. And he had and he's taking care of, of all the all the sheep there in the backside of the desert, which means you know it was a really bad place. You know what happened? God spoke to him on that burning bush. He was an 80 year old man. Let's find out about Enoch. And Enoch walked with God after. Everybody say after. After. He begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters after. Watch, watch what happens. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Hallelujah! For the first 65 years, he didn't give God the time of day. He walked in his own flesh like the whole world walks in his own flesh, or walks in her own flesh. But after 65 years... Good word. Good word. Wow. I'm sick and tired of it. When Methuselah was born, he had responsibility now. Right. He looked at the little baby and said, you know what? I heard, you know, seven generations ago, Adam, he walked with you, Lord. And then he talked with you. I want to do it. And what's stopping you and what's stopping me? Nothing. Right. Nothing. Amen. Nothing. I want to talk with you today, Jesus. I want to talk with you today, God. I want to talk with you this afternoon. I want to talk to you tonight. Hallelujah. I want to know who you are. I want to find out who you are. I'm going to study to show myself a proof of the God, a workman that he is not to be ashamed. Right to divide the word. I want to praise you. I want to worship you. I want to walk. I want to talk with you. I want a communication with you. I want to know you. Amen. What happened? Preach. What happened? And Enoch walked with God and he was not. Yes. Where God took him. Right. And God is going to take us too. And we'll walk with God. Yeah. God is going to take us too. When we talk to God. God is going to take us too. And we submit ourselves to God. When this Lord is upon immortality. This corruptible took on incorruptible. I let you know, praise God, that the dead in Christ will rise first. And we which are alive remain shall be caught in heaven and be the Lord in the air. That sounds like heaven to me. And then we shall ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Jesus is coming. And I'm getting out of here. So he had a son, Methuselah. Where'd dad go? Sleep for supper. Where'd he go? Well, he's up there praying in the woods somewhere. I don't know where they were looking for him. I'm sure they looked for him for a long time. Shoot, he's gone. Where'd he go? So the story goes, I took him home. We don't know where he is. He's so consistent. Affected Methuselah's life, but we don't know how, how much. Because the Bible doesn't bear out Methuselah's relationship with God. Uh, but uh, he lived 969 years old, according to the Bible, the longest living human. Methuselah had a son by the name of Lamech. He lived 777 years old. But it's through the succession of Enoch and Methuselah and Lamech, the world did not have to wait seven more generations. It only had to wait three more. Three more. Genesis 6 and 9, take a look. 
Genesis 6 and 7, pardon me, 6 and 7, I'm sorry. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for repent of me that I made them. 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. 9. Find out what happens now. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect. That means complete in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Noah walked with God. Thank you, great grandfather Enoch. Thank you, great uh, grand great grandfather Enoch. <laughs> What an example, Noah. Love this family enough to, to spend a hundred years building an ark in the face of ridicule and scoffers of the ungodly of this world. Noah made up his mind, I will not sit here until we all die. Right. Preach. I will not do it. I will obey God. I will walk with God. I will talk with God. An ark that was 300 cubits or 450 feet long, a football field and a half, gentlemen. Hallelujah, when he finished it, he took his family, his three sons, his three wives, and his wife in the ark. Hallelujah, and it rained 40 days and 40 nights before that happened. God shut the door. And this world is running out of time to be saved. And can I be so bold to say, we are running out of time to get in on the God's program and go out and save, get our family saved, get our loved ones saved, get our, our neighbors saved, praise God. Song, song of David, let God arise, let 
his enemies be scattered, let them also that hate him flee before him. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Amen. Wow. That's why I know what happened. Second Kings 6 and 25. Hallelujah. There was a great famine of Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until the donkey's head was sold for four score pieces of silver, 80, 80 pieces of silver. A uh, head of a donkey in the pot for the rich. And for those that were not too rich, the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung in the frying pan. For five pieces of silver. I think I keep my money in my pocket. <laughs> I, I'm with you. <laughs> Our mother, he likes sugar. Give him some sugar. <laughs> but it got worse. They ate their own children. Then he came. The whole city of Samaria was besieged by the enemy. And the enemy is surrounded Samaria and they're starving to death. And they're crying and yelling until the king said, I want the head of Elisha. Hmm. Elisha again. He said, look at that evil king who wants my head. But he started to prophesy that something's going to happen. But God wasn't going to use Elisha. He only used them for the prophecy. But he wasn't going to use them in the deliberation to carry out God's promise. Watch what happens. Next verse. Praise God. Hallelujah. 2 Kings 7 and 1. Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, and a gate of Samaria. Keep on going. God has to stop. Beautiful. She does such a wonderful job. Then a, a Lord <clears throat> that kind of hung on to the king, that was part of the army of Israel, on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God sarcastically, I might add. Behold, if the Lord would make windows of heaven, might this they be? Now you're a crazy preacher. Mm -hmm. And he said, Elisha said, Behold, thou shalt see with thy eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. You're going to see it, but you're not going to eat it. And there four lepers men at the entrance of the gate. And he said one to another, we'll stop there for a moment. Why sit here until we die? Four lovers. I can show you the Bible where a donkey talked to Balaam. God will use anybody. God loves those lepers. And our pastor was saying this morning, you know, that God's voice is going to be uh, so great it's going to wake up the dead. But even those millions that live all through eternity are going to hear for the very first time when he speaks, they're going to hear, arise. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah! Jesus. Why sit here until we die? Amen. They're starving to death. Amen. If we say we enter the city, there's no food. Then the family is in the city and we shall die there. If we sit here, if we sit here, right. if we sit here, we die also. Yeah. Now therefore, and then as well the host of the Syrians, if they save us alive, we shall live. If they don't kill us, we shall die. At least we're going to give it a shot. Right. At least we're going to do something about it. Right. We're not going to sit here until we die. Amen. If they kill us, we're going to die. Amen. If they save us, we're going to live. I'm letting it up. I don't want to die. I'm going to live. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Find out what happens. And then rolls up in the twilight. Everybody say twilight. twilight. I'm going to show you when dawn arises. And they rose up in the twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they were coming to the outermost part of the camp, behold, there was no man there. Hey, where did everybody go? Where did everybody go? Find out what happens. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots, noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. They said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel had hired against us, the king of the Hittites, the king of the Egyptians, to come upon us. Watch what happens. Therefore they rose and fled. In the twilight, when the lepers, when the lepers rose in the twilight, God rose. Yes. God rose in the twilight. He's waiting for you, brother. He's waiting for you, sister. When you arise in the name of the Lord, he's going to rise. Let God arise on his head and he's be scattered. Hallelujah. Just one lever, but I'm letting you know today you have the power at your disposal if you'll just draw nine and come. 
when somebody robs a bank, the papers say that they fled the scene. And when the bullets start flying, they're running faster. And when you draw nigh to God, and He draws nigh to you, and you resist the devil, He will flee. In God's presence, I have God's presence. He doesn't want to be anywhere near God's presence. I said, He doesn't want to be anywhere near God's presence. Therefore, they fled in the twilight, left their tents, their horses, their donkeys, whatever, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. I won't read the rest of it on that one. And you know, they did, they're eating big turkey sticks and turkey legs and maybe some roast beef and this and that and the other. They were filling up, and they said, We do like, we, we don't do good today. We need to share it. We need to share it. We need to share it. We have all this salvation to ourselves. We need to share it. I said, we need to share it, Pastor. We need to share it. We need to share it. I said, we need to share it. I said, we need to share it. We need to share it. Why sit here? Until we die. Why sit here? Until we die. Why sit here? Until we die. Why sit here? Noah loved his family enough to spend a hundred years. Yes, he did. Noah spent all this time. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Why sit here until we die? Let's stand. Let's stand. Let's stand. Hallelujah. God, all of God is doing. I know I, I sweat a little bit when I hear this, but you know what? You know what God is doing? He just wants you to make up your mind, sister. And mind. That's all. He's looking at you. He's got your picture on his refrigerator, metaphorically speaking. He loves you so much. He wants you to walk with him. He wants you to talk with him. He wants you to come in with him. And Jesus said to his disciples, all of you are going to walk away from me tonight. Not me, Lord. Not me, Lord, Peter said. Before that rooster crows, you're going to be 93 times. It's not going to happen. And Peter did his best. I'm not you know Peter did his best. He was swinging a sword. He wasn't looking to cut off that serpent, the high priest's ear. He was looking for his head. He just ducked. And Jesus picked that ear up and crazy glued it back on his head. He said, put down your sword. They that live by the sword shall die by the sword. There's another sword that I want you to pick up later, Peter. Right. Ephesians chapter 6. And above all, taking the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Thank you. The difference between Peter and Judas was this. The Bible says Judas repented himself. He felt sorry for himself and hung himself. But Peter wept tears of repentance. Under God. Big difference. Yeah. And Jesus repaired him. Jesus repaired Peter. And Peter had the keys. And he preached Pentecost. How many times have we fallen? And the Lord forgave us. Does he not deserve our love? Does he not deserve more than we give? I'm speaking myself this morning. He deserves more of me. And that's why John said, and Jesus spoke of John before we come to pray. Jesus said, there's not a man or a woman that's greater than John the Baptist. Greater than Elijah, greater than Moses, greater than Abraham, greater than any of the other prophets. There's not a greater. You know why? Because John made this declaration. I must decrease. But he must increase. The more of you, the less of him. The less of you, the more of him. And Jesus was all of him. Can we clap on the lowest one? Let's have 
Yes, God, Lord, like Enoch, like Noah, I want to walk with you, God. I want to talk with you, God. I want to be using you in this end time generation, Lord. Come, 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 come to the altar. Come to the altar. Let God rise and his enemies be scattered. Can we make that commitment today? Can we make that commitment? Oh, Jesus, help me. Help me to walk with you. Help me. Make me over anew. Lord, I want to be on the potter's wheel this morning.